Today, we're going to go over all of the latest and greatest strategies having to do with optimizing your listing in 2022, including some things I've never, ever gone over here on this podcast. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed, organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the Amazon or Walmart world. Today, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on Amazon, and in particular, it's going to be all about optimizing your listing. Now, we had just done an online workshop that we do like once every year and a half uh, it's like a webinar that we do, um, usually supposed to be like once every year, but it's been so long uh, since we updated it that we just did it a few weeks ago. And so you guys want to see the whole thing and be able to watch it, you know, like on a video and see nonstop screen shares and things like that. Uh, you know, go to h10listings.com and, and you should be able to catch it there. But I'm going to give you guys an overview here on this uh, podcast um, that hopefully, you know, even though maybe you can't see exactly what I'm doing, uh, those of you who aren't watching uh, the video of this, you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. And then maybe you can go later to that to that video to get some more details because there's a lot of stuff, guys, that has changed over the last couple of years as far as indexing goes, as far as, you know, what is index, what's not index, you know, photography, just tons and tons of different things. PPC, you know, how that relates to if you're indexed or not. And um, it's long overdue that we did one of these. So I'm happy that we're doing it now. Like I said, there's a lot of things that has changed as far as listing optimization goes, but there's also a lot of things that have stayed the same. And one is just the general principle. You know, I've said this once, I've said it a million times. You know, we here at Helium 10 obviously help you through our tools to find great products, you know, whether it's through Black Box or Pinterest Trend Finder. Um, and then we, you know, you can maybe find a great supplier from the Alibaba Supplier Finder. You know, you might have the best product in the world. The second step, you might have the best keywords in the world thanks to the research that you can do in Cerebro and Magnet and other tools that we have. But all of that is useless if you don't have a well-optimized listing, right? First of all, if you don't even get the keywords into your listing, you know, how are you gonna be searchable? How are customers gonna find it? And then know that you have an amazing product and give you five-star reviews, right? Uh, and, and if you don't have a, you know, a product that can be found and bought, it doesn't matter how amazing your product is, you know, it's useless. You're just gonna be sitting there and collecting dust in Amazon warehouses. Now, uh, one thing I went over in this workshop and I think is important to understand is how just small, changes and small impacts can have kind of a big impact on your bottom line, all right? So small changes to your listing can help your conversion rate and that can have a big impact on your bottom line, all right? Let me, let me just uh, explain it. Let, let's just say, pretend you, your product is the uh, coffin shelf, the Project X coffin shelf, all right? That actually retails for $29.97 on Amazon. Now, let's say you've got 100 daily sessions uh, or 100 people are are viewing your listing every day, okay? And your conversion rate is 8%, which is actually not that great. It's pretty bad if your conversion rate is 8%, all right? But watch what a little bit can do. So if your conversion rate is 8%, that means every, um, every sale you're doing, $29.97, as I said, that comes out to in a month about $7,100 or $7,200 is what you're grossing. Now, what if you could just, you know, tweak a few things here and there on your listing, your sessions doesn't go up, everything else stays the same, but your conversion rate goes up just 2%, 2% to 10%. Well, what that means is you are actually now selling 10 units a day instead of eight, right? Still at $29.97, you're now grossing $9,000 a month. That's an increase of almost $2,000 just from that 10 or that 2% increase to 10%. What if you increase it another 5%? Guys, we're talking single digit number increases here. We're not, we're not talking about, hey, increase your conversion rate 20% or 30%. We're talking single digit increases, all right? Let's just say now you go up to 15%. You still only have 100 daily sessions. Now you're selling 15 units a day, right, at that $29.97 you're now grossing $13,500 a month. From your original conversion rate from eight to 15, you are now, just by optimizing your listing, and if it has this effect, grossing $6,300 a month more. All right, so you, you see what kind of effect just a small bump on your conversion rate, you know, 2%, 3%, 4% can have. And, and 
that's just the beauty of it. Now, what happens though is listing optimization isn't just about you know changing your conversion rate, about the people who are already going to see your your uh, your page, right? It's about you know getting more keywords into your listing, knowing how to uh, put the keywords in your listing so that perhaps you can actually be seen by a wider audience. So imagine this double effect: not only can you increase your conversion rate, but you can increase your sessions. So remember, in those scenarios, I was giving you you know a hundred sessions. What if you can increase that to a hundred and fifty sessions? and increase your conversion rate to like, you know, 10, 12% from that 8%. You can see how it's kind of a snowball effect. And so that's the power of listing optimization. Just a little tweak here or there and little tiny increases to your conversion rate and little increases to the exposure of how many people are seeing your product. And it can have a huge impact on your bottom line. Now, in that workshop I told you, h10listings.com, you um, actually can see a whole bunch of detailed strategies on your photography. We've actually gone over that recently on the podcast with Leilama. She was actually the one who was on the that workshop with me. Again, if you guys want to see that part, make sure to go to h10listings.com. You can see that part there. I'm not going to talk uh, about it too much on here because we just did that you know about a month ago but we had some great info on you know what are infographic images uh, 3d imaging uh, things of that nature now let's just focus right now uh, again on the content of an amazon listing as far as the written content all right and now there's two things that you've got to keep in mind your your listings should be optimized for number one the amazon algorithm but then number two your target customer you know, I've said it before so many times that one of the biggest mistake that Amazon sellers make sometimes is they get too caught up in the metrics and then and thinking like a seller. They have their 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 seller's hat on instead of the buyer's hat. All right. What do I mean by that? Obviously at Helium 10, we give you so many tools, we give you so much training like this. We tell you what's important to algorithm and and you know about max characters and and title density and all these like metrics and magnet IQ score and things like that. And then Sellers get so focused on that stuff, which are important, but they forget at the end of the day, they've got to sell to an actual customer, an actual human being. So it's a balancing act. If you are selling on Amazon and you're optimizing a listing, you've got to make two people happy. I remember the first person I heard who said it like that about keeping two people happy was Brock Johnson, who, who's been on this podcast before. But number one, again, is the Amazon algorithm. You gotta make the Amazon algorithm happy so that you can get that exposure. But number two, and even more important, you have got to make your buyer happy, all right? Because if all you had to worry about was the Amazon algorithm, you could just throw a whole bunch of random keywords and, and stuff titles and stuff bullet points and all this stuff, and, and you can be fully optimized for the Amazon algorithm so that the Amazon algorithm loves your listing and throws you up on page one. But at the end of the day, if a customer is just going to see this whole garbly glue of a of a listing, you know, they're not going to buy it. So remember to balance that out. Now, let's talk about the order of what aspects of a listing are important to that first person that we have to make happy, the Amazon algorithm. And this has not changed as far as I know. And in my test, I still see it kind of working the same way. But this was something that actually kind of like got out of Amazon a while back where uh, it actually showed, there was something that showed, there was a document that showed what they view as the most important parts. And the number one most important is the title. You know, number two, the back end search terms. And number three, I kind of call this 2A and 2B actually, because in my experience, in my test, it, it kind of uh, interchangeable. Uh, the, the impact of both of these are very similar. So 2A and 2B for me would be the back end search terms and then the back end subject matter if your listing has it. Now, the next one would be the bullet points. And then lastly, the description. Now, um, just because that description is all the way at the end doesn't mean it's completely not important. I mean, if you're in a, if you're in a niche where you wanna be indexed for as many keywords as possible, well, you need to make sure that you take advantage of all of the different aspects of a listing. Now, let's talk about getting indexed. All right, now I'm gonna go a little bit deep in here and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit more than I did even on that uh, workshop that I did, that webinar, because some, some things I've discovered in the last few days kind of like are, are kind of like blowing my mind about how things are different than even like 2020. All right, so 
index. What, what does index even mean? Um, you, you guys have heard me talk about this a lot of times, how, how Manny Coates, one of the first ones to talk uh, or use that word in kind of the common vernacular of an Amazon seller, where being indexed means, you know, are you searchable for a keyword? Has Amazon related your listing to a certain keyword so that it's potentially possible that you could show up in the search results or perhaps the sponsored results for a certain keyword. Now, now what does that mean? Well, you know, first of all, if you type a keyword, is it possible that you show up at all? Now, here's the thing. You could be indexed for something, but not ranking for it and invisible if you were to search, even going to the last page. Well, that's because, you know, years ago, Amazon kind of stopped in most categories showing like all 30 or 40 pages of, of, of the results, right? Back in the day, you type, you know, like 2017, you type in iPhone 6 case or whatever was the, the iPhone case then. And it'll say one of 50 out of 20,000 results or something like that. Well, you could literally go page by page to almost all of those to the end to see all of them. Now, in most categories now in search results, you can only see the top seven pages usually. So which is about 300 results, organic results, right? So just because you're indexed does not always mean you're showing up in the search results. So that's important to, to understand. There's a different, there's a, there's a differentiation there. You know, sometimes I hear people say, oh, you know, Helium 10 index checker says I'm indexed for this, but I checked and, and I don't see myself anywhere. Well, that's because Amazon only shows like 306, but there are many, uh, you know, search results where it's, you know, up to thousands, uh, tens of thousands of, of results show up. So if you want to know how many different products are indexed for a certain keyword, you just type that keyword in. And then at the very top of the page, it'll say something like, Hey, this is one out of 48 for 526 results for coffin shelf. All right. Now, now why is being indexed so important guys? You know, th this is important because you want to show up, you want to be found either in sponsored ads or organic ads. You have got, or organic results, I should say, you want to be able to show up for a certain keyword. You know, that's where 50% of sales come from uh, is our, our searches. And so if you, you're not searchable for a keyword, well, you know, how are you going to get uh, found by that customer that you are targeting? So, so how can you get indexed is the next question. And of course, you know, there's just common sense things, right? is put the put the keywords in your listings all right this bottom line if you want to be indexed the easiest way get those keywords into your listing now you do not need to have every single keyword phrase in your listing to get indexed now we always suggest having your most important phrases you know usually about 20 to 25 if you can get them in phrase form in your listing and again phrase form means like if the keyword is um black coffin shelf you know, you have black coffin shelf in that exact phrase somewhere in your listing, perhaps even multiple times. We'll talk a little bit uh, about that later. But that is actually uh, important for the phrases. That, 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 again, is making the Amazon algorithm happy. But to be indexed for a phrase like that, you do not necessarily have to have it in phrase form. I, I, I like to only uh, save those for my most important ones. For example, you could have black in the title coffin in the bullet points, shelf in the description, and theoretically speaking, most of the time, as long as Amazon thinks that you're relevant to it, you will be searchable or indexed for black coffin shelf, even though it's not in phrase form. So the, the process that you should do in order to get indexed is when you're doing your keyword research, and again, we, we have other you know podcast episodes we've done about that as far as the details go, but you might come up with you know thousands and thousands of keywords that, that you potentially might want to show up for, right? Pick your top 20, based on what's the most important and the highest searched for your exact niche, the most relevant to you, put those in phrase form, right? Keep those on a separate list. And then all the rest of the 1,000, 2,000 phrases, what you do, copy all of those and put it into a tool called Frankenstein. All right, now with Frankenstein, with just a couple of clicks, you're gonna be able to take all of those thousand phrases and then extract out the single unique keywords. Because if you have a thousand, phrases that are related to coffin shelf. I guarantee coffin is in like 200 or 300 of those phrases, right? You only need it once in your listing though, in order to be searchable for it, all right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get those phrases, it, or those, those phrases split up into the individual keywords, and then you copy your individual keywords to our tool listing builder, all right? Now with listing builder, you are going to be able to make sure that you have all of your individual keywords that you wanted to get in your listing and all of the phrases as well that you wanted to get into your listing. And then, so even though you might only have 300 individual words, you you technically could be 
index for up to a thousand or thousands of other keywords that those individual words are part of. Now, here, uh, let me get a little bit into something that I didn't talk about, all right? Now, as you guys know, you Helium 10 members, we've got Index Checker, one of the first tools that Helium 10 ever came up with, great tool. And it's the only index checking tool that I know of that does three checks. Now, if you don't have Index Checker, you can still do these, these checks on your own, all right? The first check that Index Checker is doing is doing what we call the traditional way of checking of your index. And this used to work 100% of the time before, but then it kind of uh, you know stopped being the only check that you could do you know, about three or four years ago. So it's you copy the ASIN and the keyword, and then you put it um, into an Amazon search result. So if you want to say, hey, is this coffin shelf index for the word coffin shelf, I would get that the ASIN of that product and then space and then put coffin shelf in the search bar and then, you know, see if it actually uh, comes up. All right. Now, here's the thing um, that stopped working completely as far as being the only way to check. Like you, you could be not indexed there, but still be indexed on Amazon. So we came up with two more checks that you can do. The secondary check is what we call the storefront check. Now an index checker, we don't automatically do that. So if you guys are you know, familiar with Helium 10, you've got, got to actually enter the storefront ID into a field there before you um, press enter on the index check to make sure it's doing that other check, all right? So storefront check though, if you're just doing it on your own without Helium 10, you would go to the storefront of a listing, all right? The way you do that is, you, let's say you're on a listing and then it says sh uh, shipped by Amazon, sold by uh, Manny's Mysterious Oddities or whatever is, is the name or the how cool is that? I think is our storefront name there. Click there and you see the storefront ID in the URL at the top of that page. You've got to take that storefront ID. It's a long uh, number of digits, more than a, more than an ASIN, and then paste it into Index Checker, all right? Or you could just go into Amazon and go to that storefront and then actually go, click the next page, which which is their storefront, where it shows all of the seller's products and then just type in the keyword and the ace in there, and that's the storefront check. Now, the third one is kind of difficult to do. It's called the field ASIN uh, check, and it's what we're doing is we're just checking some URL. That is just a, another way of checking if you are indexed. And so again, there's three different ways that you can check if you are indexed. Now, here is some of the new stuff. Number one, one thing I've been noticing for months now um, is that the traditional index check gives a lot of what I like to call false positives, all right? Um, and it's not that index checker is wrong. I mean, I, it, it, this happens if, if you just check in Amazon yourself, but if you put in the ASIN and the keyword, it'll show up your product, but it doesn't always mean your index. That's why I always like, I always suggest doing two or three checks or just using index checker because a lot of results now, you can put in a random keyword plus the ASIN and it'll show up, but it does not mean your index. Why Amazon is doing that? I have no idea, um, but it's really weird. Like you'll enter in your product and then a random keyword and, and then 15 results will come up, including your product, but it doesn't always mean that you are indexed. So if I'm using index checker, I usually like to try and make sure that at least two of those checks are, are going through. Now, here's the other thing that's crazy guys. Sometimes, you could use index checker or be checking these things yourself. And it will say three times, we do three checks and it will say you are not indexed or you're using not Helium 10 and it'll, you try three different ways and in no way you're indexed, but you are ranking organically and in sponsored ads. I had this happen with a coffin shelf. I've been doing a lot of testing, you know, lately. And there was a, a, a keyword, it was spider web shelf. All right, now, now spider and web are not in the coffin shelf listing anywhere. So from day one, I was not indexed, but I check spider web shelf and all three, uh, th those three words together, not indexed in index checker, not indexed on Amazon, but I was ranking for it on page one. All right, and I'm like, what in the world is going on? I had never seen that before. And I, I started looking into other listings. There are a lot of listings out there where if you check these traditional ways, it is not indexed. It will say that you're not indexed, but sure enough, there you are in sponsor results. I tried this for some other keywords that I knew I was not indexed for, and I tried to even run sponsored ads on it. And sure enough, I got impressions. And this is, I don't know if anybody's talked about this, guys, but this is kind of impactful. Before, 
you could not run a manual sponsored ad for a targeted keyword that you were not indexed for. And we've given you hacks and different things that still work on how you can get indexed for keywords that aren't on your listing, you know, by relating yours to other listings, et cetera. But now in the last few months, this is just really interesting. You can now even run exact manual ads on keywords that not only are not in your listing, but you are not indexed under the traditional way. And so I started diving into this to try and see if I can figure out, you know, what was causing this. And it was very interesting is that related keywords had some um, activity in sponsored ads. So I had never targeted spider web shelf in um, in sponsored ads before, but in an auto or broad campaign, it was like spider web w- with no space in the middle and something else came up and we didn't get purchases on it. Nope. No purchases on these keywords, but we, we had impressions from like an auto or broad campaign and we actually had a, a number of clicks. And so it looks like what is happening is Amazon in the back end may, maybe like kind of like loosening their, their, criteria for what gets indexed and not indexed. You know, like I said before, to get indexed, you would always have to have like at least a couple of conversions for some kind of keyword. And then only that keyword would be now um, indexed thanks to that PPC from an auto or broad campaign. But now even just clicks um, and activity and impressions can get you indexed, but not only for that keyword, but like other versions of the keyword. So I looked in our sponsored ads. As a matter of fact, let, let me let me try and show that to you guys here. Again, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you'll probably see it. Yeah, so I, I'm here in Adtomic, as you can see, and, and I did a search for all of the spider, the keywords with spider in it. And you'll see here, there is not, you know, on the right column here, if you guys can see this, you'll see that there are zero, zero orders. But there is um, a couple hundred impressions here for all these keywords related to spider. And we had a total of 60 clicks. So because of all these clicks, I guess, for for things like spider coffee mug and spider mirror and spider web rug and Spider-Man bathroom decor. And here's one spider shelf. It's not spider web shelf. But because of that, what happened was is that Amazon is like, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and and kind of like make sure you're searchable for all these keywords. You know, you're not going to know that we've made you searchable, but it's happening. All right. So. Um, you know, you're going to see some things in Helium 10 that'll help kind of like let you know if if there are keywords that you're not even indexed for, but that you are still searchable, you know, that, that, that'll be coming down the road, but this is, this is all kind of new. So, um, just beware guys that the, the traditional ways that you check, like, Hey, am I indexed? Am I not indexed? And then am I going to be able to be shown for PPC? They're not necessarily foolproof ways. You're, I guarantee you guys are uh, able to target keywords in PPC that you probably didn't even think that you could target because you weren't indexed in any traditional index. And so, you know, some, some different ways to kind of know if this is happening is run your PPC reports. If you're using Adtomic or if you're using your, your seller central and see where you've gotten clicks. And then what you do is you check those common words. Like, like I, I showed you before, there was 33 different words that had spider in it that I was getting clicks and activity. And what happened was now long tail keywords that had spider, I was now showing up for an Amazon search results. So uh, tools that can help you do that, if you see a certain keyword that you seem to have activity on and that you know you are not indexed for or that you don't have in your listing, take that root keyword or root keyword phrase, put it in the Helium 10 tool magnet, and then sort it out for smart complete in magnet. And that's going to show you a bunch of long tail keywords that have that root keyword in there. So the, again, guys, this is the first time I am ever saying this in any public form, because this is kind of like new discoveries that I've just recently been making. Now, some of this, again, it is kind of like we've talked about this for a couple of years, you know, like getting indexed for keywords that aren't in your listing and having activity related to it. But this is the first time where now you can actually start getting indexed for these variations of keywords that you haven't, not only do you not have in your listing, but you haven't even had purchases uh, from these keywords. I think this is really cool. It's giving you more ability to show up for more keywords. And so it makes it that much more important that all of the root keywords you do have in your listing, because the more you have that, the more things that Amazon is going to like show you for in broad and auto campaigns. And all it takes is a couple of these other like kind of big keywords that have a lot of, a lot of other, um, a lot of other long tail variations of it to have activity and boom, exponentially, you have the potential to come up for a lot more, um, 
you know, keywords in both PPC and organic. So really cool stuff that is happening right now in the uh, indexing wor uh, world. And I'm sure I'm going to be talking about this more later on. Um, let's talk a, a little bit about uh, going back to the rest of the listing. Um, we said before that the most important one is the title. So let's talk about some don'ts for the title, you know, um, don't keyword stuff, guys. All right. I, you know, I, I've talked about this so many times before. This is going back to making the uh, customer happy. All right. You know, no customer wants to see some crazy, crazy keyword stuff title. You know, like there was one I found the other day that I used for the workshop. And let me read you this title, guys. It says, Auschwitz compatible with Samsung Galaxy S4 wallet case and temper glass screen protector, flip cover, card holder, cell accessories, phone ca cases for Galaxy. That's a misspelling. Uh, and it goes on and on and on. That, that's literally all the title. That's ridiculous. You know, if you're a customer, you know, do you, do you want to see a, a title like that? You know, nobody wants to see uh, something like that. Uh, another thing you guys should not be doing is promotional phrases. You know, some of the keywords that uh, Amazon actually marks and tells you not to do are keywords like free shipping, 100% quality guaranteed, hot item, uh, bestseller, and things like that. Uh, another don't is don't go over the max characters uh, if, if, if possible. All right. Now I say if possible, because this is really weird. You know, there's, there's, first of all, there's tons of different max characters that you'll see in different listings. You know, some say 50, some say 80, some say a hundred, some say 250. Um, but you know, I actually have not seen listings get suppressed by going over some, some even top sellers do it. Like there is this, uh, shampoo and conditioner from wow. And if you actually put it into your own seller central account, you'll see that it, Amazon is telling you don't go over 50 characters, all right? However, this top seller that's doing like millions of dollars a year, it's got like almost 200 characters in it and obviously nothing has happened to it. So, you know, I know there's smart Alex out there who say, hey, Bradley, why are you saying not to go over the the uh, max characters? Uh, I, I do it and I haven't had any trouble. I get it. You know, there's a lot of times where, where you know, Amazon does not always enforce it. I'm just saying what Amazon is saying. It's probably best to, to try and keep it under, especially if it's 250. Now, if it's 50... You know, that is like super, super low. I probably would go over if, if everybody else in the niche is going over. I'm probably going to go over too. Um, but yeah, um, it, don't go over 250 because that just doesn't look that great. Another thing not to do is to use all caps. You know, sometimes people say, oh, I'm going to use all caps in my title so that I can stand out more in search results. Actually, that's against uh, Amazon Terms of Service uh, to do that. What, what are some of the, the, the things that you should do uh, in your title? Uh, First thing, get your most important keyword phrases in your title, all right? You know, I, I've talked about this before. We call it keyword stuffing without keyword stuffing. You know, for example, let's say your main keywords are egg tray, wooden egg tray, rustic wooden egg tray, egg tray decor. If I started off my title, rustic wooden egg tray decor, guess what? All of those four phrases is all there in phrase form because they're kind of like feeding off of each other. It's all in phrase form. You got rustic wooden egg tray. You've got wooden egg tray. You've got egg tray and you've got egg tray decor all in one. All right. So this is great to do. Um, if you are, if you want to get some important keywords and make that path to page one easier for those keywords, get those in your title. Another thing we've talked about it is having in mind uh, title density. All right. We have that in almost all of our keyword research tools now where you can actually see how many times on page one, the last time we checked, a certain keyword is in the title in phrase form in those search results on page one. You know, and, and if you find a keyword that is really, really relevant to your niche and, you know, decently searched and it has a low title density number, like three, there's only meaning there's only like three or less um, products on page one that have that title or that have that keyword in the title, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get to uh, page one as far as you know when, when you're trying to get that initial activity. Uh, another thing that's important is to optimize your canonical URL, all right? Optimize your canonical URL. Um, how, how, how can you do that? Um, this is one of the ones that kind of like bonus tips I gave, and I've talked about this before, nothing, nothing new here, but for those of you who don't know, uh, first of all, what your canonical URL, uh, let me just show it to you, those of you watching on YouTube here, what your canonical URL is, the URL that Amazon assigns every listing, and it's the one that's indexed principally by Google as, as well. So if, if you look, if you search for any keyword on Amazon, you click it and you look at the URL, it'll say amazon.com, and then there'll be a forward slash, and then usually five, six, or seven words uh, separated by a um, dash. 
and that's your canonical URL, and it's what it shows up into um, in Google as well. Now, the way that you can kind of lock in your canonical URL from day one is get five full words. This doesn't work 100% of the time. For me, it's like 90% of the time because sometimes I'm not sure what Amazon considers a full word. I know numbers are not considered full words, and then like and and to and the are not considered full words, but sometimes there's like a gray area and it's hard to know which Amazon considers a full word. But if you put five keywords right there and then a dash, a uh, space after the after the last keyword and then a dash and then another space, usually those first five keywords will lock in as your canonical URL. Uh, pro tip, you can actually change it later on, you know, like I've done it before. Six months after I had a listing, I changed those first five words, boom, 24 hours later, my canonical URL changed without having to do anything else. Now, sometimes that doesn't work and sometimes that doesn't work for me. So what, what's the net, what's a uh, plan B? Uh, plan B is go ahead and change it. But then if it doesn't work after like 24 to 48 hours, all you have to do is open up a case to seller central and just say, Hey, seller central, um, uh, I'd like to optimize my canonical URL to, to accurately represent my product. Uh, could you make it this and then actually give them the canonical URL? that you're wanting to change it to with like five or six uh, keywords separated by dashes. And as long as it's relevant, it's not something crazy, they'll be like, oh yeah, cool, no problem. And, and I just did that a couple weeks ago, still works, and, and they change it on our test coffin shelf listing. More tips, um, hey, put your brand name in the title, guys. You know, I know this is a controversial topic. A lot of people don't wanna do that, but that's what Amazon says they want you to do. And they even say that, hey, if you don't uh, put your canonical, your, or you don't put your canonical, if you don't put your brand name in the title, uh, we have a, a, an algorithm or a bot, or I forgot what exactly they says, um, but it says, we'll, we'll sometimes go ahead and put it for you. Now, here's the thing. They don't tell you this, but if that happens a lot, of, I've seen it happen before. What happens is if they have to go change your listing title, it's going to change to something super short and not optimize. And then once they change it, you're not able to change it anymore. Like it's locked in. So be on the safe side, guys, go ahead and put your brand name in your title to kind of save you know you from having to deal with that um, issue later on. Now, another thing that a lot of sellers don't do is they don't keep truncation in mind. Truncation means that sometimes in search results on a desktop or in mobile, Amazon cuts off the title after a certain number of um, characters, all right? So take a look at where your listing or how your listing is showing up in mobile. You know, I gave a couple of examples on the webinar. There was one where there was this like moon shelf. And then the very last uh, part of the title says moon F F A P H A. And then dot, 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 it got truncated, right? It got truncated to moon F and that's, you know, it's like a Vietnamese soup, right? But it really was trying to say moon phase design or something like that. But that, that half the word was was cut off. So it just looked really weird. The other example I showed was this like hook, this coffin shaped hook. But then it got it got cut off right where after it says in the title coffin shaped towel. And so you're looking at this maybe in search results. You're like, what am I buying a coffin shaped towel? Like, what the heck is that? So, again, uh, depending, try not to have your title cut off in some random random place. All right. It's really important to. To, to, to make sure that, you know, in search results, uh, your listings make sense and that people actually do want to click on it. All right. So, so that's uh, the title. Now let's talk about the search terms and subject matter. Some best practices there. Um, first of all, use all characters available. Now, this is important because th this is valuable real estate. You know, like the title, you're very limited with the kind of space you can use. So usually traditionally for search terms, um, it's about 250 characters, 249 bytes, I should say. Now, now here's the interesting thing. Um, for the search terms, for the longest time, it was only 249 characters, then it became like 5,000 at one point and went back down to 1,000. And then now for a few years, it's been like 249, 250 uh, around there. Now, before, if you were brand registered, and this is one of the things that we talked about in our last workshop whew, about a year and a half ago, if you're a brand registered, the cool thing was, was that Amazon would not count the spaces. So if it said you had 249 bytes, if you're a brand registered, you can go into the uh, brand registry part, part of, uh, of your um, seller central and use the search term optimizer and actually put in extra keywords that you could not put in in the regular back end of your listing because in that field, it would not count the spaces as bytes. You know, bytes include spaces for those who don't know. Now, the interesting thing is now everybody, whether you are brand registered or not, 
Um, and when I say now, this has been like a few months. It, it was uh, late 2021 where they made this change where now everybody can go ahead and put extra beyond 249 not counting the spaces. So, you know, how, how many that is, it depends on how long your words are, right? But, you know, usually you can get like about 280, 290 bytes now because Amazon is not counting the bytes. It's only in this field. In the other fields, Amazon still counts bytes the normal way to count bytes and characters, uh, which includes spaces. But for some reason in the search terms, now for everybody, not just brand registered sellers, you have a little bit more real estate that you can do. It's not, it's not anything earth shattering, but hey, search terms is important. You, you can get a good two, three, four, five more words in there, um, if not more, with uh, them not counting the bytes. For subject matter, you can do usually about uh, 50 characters per line, all right? And um, usually you have three lines or up to five lines sometimes of subject matter that you can use. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about subject matter later and how you can get that if you don't have subject matter. Another thing is don't duplicate words in, in just one field. I, I don't really like that. You know, there, I threw up an example. I know people do that guys and they probably do it for the Amazon algorithm. But again, I, I just can't see buyers liking this. Like one of the top collagen peptides out there, check, check out this title. It says collagen powder, purely inspired collagen peptides, powder, collagen supplements for women and men, collagen protein powder. Guys, that, that was all one title. If you notice, it, I said collagen four times and powder three times, all in one title. I do not like to, to duplicate the same word in the same exact field. Now, I'll talk a little bit later about, about duplicating you know, what, something in your title and in the search terms or subject matter. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later, but don't do it in the same exact field. Like one line of subject matter, one, one field of search terms, one bullet point, don't be using the same word, guys. It's, Amazon doesn't like it, and it, I can't imagine that, you know, Amazon buyers, you know, would like that either. Uh, another thing is you should use misspelled words and foreign language words. All right. An example I used when I did the workshop was, um, you know, you type in magnet and uh, or in magnet, you type in collagen and you see a bunch of misspellings like C-O-L-A-G-N and things like that. Use those that you find in magnet, put it in the back end of your, of your listing. I don't like putting those in the front end because it makes it look like you can't spell. All right. Um, Spanish words, you know, put those in the back end uh, and other language keywords too. Sometimes they're Spanglish, you know, like for example, collagen for women is a keyword that's Spanglish. You know, there's one word that's Spanish, one word that's English. So I like, if, if it's a really high search volume, that one actually has 27,000 searches a month. I'm going to put that in phrase form in the back end of, of my listing to get that extra juice. Uh, another thing that's happening now is there's a lot of um, non-Spanish and non uh, English keywords being searched on Amazon. Like for example, the the Korean word for ho, like a garden ho, H-O-E, is a uh, homie. And if you look in uh, Cerebro on some of these uh, gardening hoes, you'll see actual Korean words, kind of like the uh, the shirt I'm wearing now. I'm wearing a, a shirt from Reply 1988, my favorite Korean drama. But it's in Hangul, which is you know the Korean alphabet. So people are actually typing with a Korean keyboard into Amazon USA and typing in these Korean words for products that they want. And it's a, a, this is a great example. If you type in ho, H-O-E, into Amazon, the English word, you know, there's a thousand gardening ho products that come up. That means there's a thousand products indexed for this keyword. If you type in the Korean word for ho, homie, in the actual Hangul, the Korean alphabet, only 148 products are index for that keyword. So guys use tools like Magnet and Cerebro to find these other language keywords, get those into the back end of your listing um, in the search terms or subject matter so that you can be uh, indexed for it. You know, 148 results come up. That means pretty much you just get your listing in there or you get that into your listing. You're going to be on page three instantly. If you don't have access to subject matter, if you're in the uh, you know foreign country, I'm sorry, you know, like Germany, um, UK, the last I checked, They've never had subject matter available to most of the categories, if not all the categories. Uh, in the USA, more and more and more listings now have it disappeared from the back end of the listing. So if you were to like look in the back end of, for example, our coffin shelf, you'll see all it shows right here is the search terms. There is no space for the subject matter. So if you guys want to get subject matter into your listing, if you have a USA listing, and if you're a diamond member of Helium 10, if you're a diamond member of Helium 10, what you have to do is you just need to go into Listing Builder 
And then in the subject matter, go ahead and enter in three, four, five lines of subject matter and then hit the sync to Amazon button. And what we're doing is we're actually syncing with the back end of your listing and you'll never see it in the back end of your listing under subject matter. But trust me, it works. I've done this time and time again where I check if it's updating and sure enough, it does words I wasn't indexed before. 15 minutes later, after syncing my listing with Listing Builder and putting something in the back end for the subject matter there, I now have subject matter. So at least three, uh, 150 characters, three lines of 50 I would use. And then I would go ahead and try and do all five too, just to see if you can uh, get that. So great little hack there that unless you have Helium 10 and the Diamond Plan, you're not able to do. For some of you guys that, you know, the Diamond Plan, a lot of people use just so they can have Atomic and they can have sub users and a bunch of other things. But just if you have a lot of listing, just the fact that you can get subject matter, which is so important for, for super important indexing issues, that's worth the, the extra uh, hundred bucks, <laughs> in my opinion, for, for diamond, for the diamond plan to get, to get those um, rank juice from, from your subject matter. Now, another thing not to do in subject matter and search terms, don't use brands, other competitor brands, trademark words, ASINs. This is against Amazon terms of service. I always get asked that, Hey, uh, can, can I put, you know, the brand name of my competitor in the back end? You know, they won't know I, I, I have it. So I just want to get like indexed for it. No, don't do it guys. I don't think it helps that much anyways. And secondly, it's literally against Amazon terms of service. You don't want to get your listing uh, shut off. So guys, um, we're going to have to, you know, split this into two parts because I've already been at this for like 45 minutes or so. I apologize, but we've got a lot of information to go over. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to give you guys more tips uh, on some A plus content and some other advanced strategies that I've been um, studying as far as listing optimization. But I hope this gets you on the right track for optimizing at least the, you know, the copy of your listing. A lot of new stuff we talked about today, like things that are happening with indexing that have not happened before um, and some other cool tests about like the 1000 on the bullet points and other things. If you guys have been testing anything cool, you know, let me know, you know, um, find the Instagram for this podcast, H10 Bradley, you know, uh, send me a message on there or comment somewhere on there. Let me know if you, if you found some new stuff or tag me in the Helium 10 Facebook group. I would love to hear what is working and not working for you as far as your listing copy goes. This is, a, this is something that's rapidly changing. You know, in the past few months, we've already seen multiple things changing on the Amazon side as far as how they do listings and indexing and PPC and things like that. So I'd love to hear what you are seeing out there and then, you know, we can incorporate it in future trainings. Um, look forward to seeing you guys soon at the Prosper Show. You know, if you're watch, listening to this and it's before March 15th uh, or March 14th, I believe, make sure to, to drop in um, on our booth at Prosper Show or go to our Helium 10 social, hang out with us, h10.me forward slash Prosper 2022. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode and we'll give you some more great strategies for listing optimization. We'll see you then.